I have a sister. She's a nymphomaniac slut. Her name is Beryl. She smokes a pipe. I think she does. She says there's nothing like clamping your lips around an old church warden. <laughs> but I think you can give up smoking if you make yourself proud of it. Save the money that you, you don't spend on cigarettes where you can see it. I got a big glass jar. Try this. I put it on the mantelpiece, and all the money that I saved by not buying cigarettes, I put in the glass jar. And I felt proud to see it build up. And then at the end of the month, I would take that money into town and buy cocaine. <laughs> What do you think? We should have more non-smoking zones, maybe. That would be good. The, the French in France, you're not allowed to smoke in public areas. Gosh, I hope this doesn't make the French people hostile and irritable. <laughs> people... Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Do you think we want a channel tunnel? No. Universal, no. Right across the entire room here at the lakeside, no. But we've got it. Who's it for? For the bloody French, isn't it? <laughs> so if Germany declares war again, they can be in London with their hands up that much quicker. <laughs> you know, people... People are suing the tobacco companies for lung infection. Do you know about this? People with emphysema are suing the tobacco companies and successfully they're making money. They're making money, I said to my wife, for God's sake, sue Cadbury's for your thighs. <laughs> the women I feel sorry for, I sorry, feel really sorry for you girls who are trying to give it up. So you switch to low tar, low nicotine cigarettes. Oh, come on, that's pathetic. Just because some man has persuaded you it's worth sucking twice as hard to get half as much. <laughs> Do something else to relax instead of smoke. Get a, get, a, get a pet. You know, if you stroke an animal, slows down your heartbeat, you live longer, you relax. I have a pussycat called Sydney, and I stroke my pussycat, and I love my pussycat. They're expensive. Cats are expensive because, no, not just cat food. Cat food is not expensive, but veterinary fees are expensive. My vet told me my cat needed cat x-rays. Have you ever run into this? Do you know how much they are? 35 pounds. I mean, I love the cat. But I'm not paying 35 pounds for bloody cat x-rays. I'm sorry, I'm not. Put him in a hole, all took him to Heathrow, shoved him through security. There he was. <laughs> we got a dog living with us at the moment, my daughter's dog. She's a, she, she got pregnant, she's allergic to dog hair, we have to look after her dog. She thought it was funny to name the dog after me. The dog is called Bob. The dog is called Bob. My wife is yelling at the dog, very badly trained dog. The neighbours know we haven't got a dog, so they think she's shouting at me. She's going, get your nose out of there, Bob! <laughs> you know you're not allowed on the bed, Bob! Stop drinking out of the toilet, Bob! Because <laughs> he does this dog. He drinks out of the toilet, which <laughs> makes me laugh. Because I'm ticklish down there. <laughs> give you a tip. If you've got a dog, I'll give you a tip. If your dog poos in the house, if the dog does little jobs in the house, here's a tip. Get some elastic bands, mix them in his food. Give him his normal dog food, but put elastic bands in it. Then when he poos in the house, wait till it dries, chances are there'll be a little loop. You can pick it up. <laughs> Sling it next door. <laughs> I think dogs are more responsible towards women. They're female. Female dogs are treated better by male dogs than men treat women. Because you know, a man, if they made a little conquest, you know, they'll boast about it. They'll be down the pub telling the lads. You know that, ladies. But you'd never find a dog down on the corner saying, Rex, Rover, come here. <laughs> See that hot bitch over there? I had her uh, last night. I'm not, I'm not kidding, 12 tits, 12 tits. <laughs> I had a Rottweiler once. I, well, I say a Rottweiler, it was half Rottweiler and half sheepdog. It used to herd things together and kill them and... <laughs> I miss Fluffy, but my, my brother, my brother has a pit bull, they're terrifying. Pit bull terriers are terrifying, and when they bite people, what do they do? They take them to the vet, 
and castrate them. Excuse me, that's the wrong end. <laughs> Pull their teeth out. If you take their bollocks off, you know where to kick them. <laughs> My brother's pit, he's pit Terry comes in the room, Christmas this was, I'm sitting there, innocently, he falls in love with my shin. <laughs> oh yes, get the, gets the hots for my right leg, starts having it away with me. He's a pit bull terrier for Christ's sake. What am I supposed to do? I faked an orgasm. <laughs> and dogs, they, the moment you meet a dog, where does it sniff? Where does it sniff? <laughs> Not your foot, is it? Or your hand, it's straight in there, isn't it? And what do people say when that happens? They go, oh, ha, 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 he's smelling my dog. <laughs> well, you keep it in a bloody funny place, don't you? <laughs> why don't you unzip your fly, let him breathe a little bit? <laughs> That's why I don't like big dogs, because big dogs, wherever you are, when big dogs come in the room, they run out of here and they stick their snouts in your crotch and they go, <laughs> And little dogs are worse, because you've got to get right down on the floor to let them do it. <laughs> I think dogs are smarter than us, you know. Dogs, ever notice this? Dogs never, ever tread in dog shit. <laughs> They've got twice as many chances as us, you know. This dog of ours goes around, we've got a farm next to us, and he goes around and tries to have it away with the chickens. And the cockerel doesn't like that, because there's a cockerel in there who clucks defiance. That's distinct from the average solicitor. The cockerel clucks defiance, whereas the average solicitor went on. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't know what a cockerel's got to be so cocky about. I heard on a program on TV that a cockerel, when he has sex with a hen, takes a quarter of a second. A quarter of a second. You feel better about this man? Yes. <laughs> That's all it takes. He goes, cock a doo 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 and he already cock a doo doo did, didn't he? <laughs> how long is a quarter of a second? I don't know how to measure that. Is that a quarter of a second? That's it. That's all it is, isn't it? That's a quarter of a second. What's that like for the hens? They're in the farmyard picking up corn. Oh, there's some corn over there on... What the hell is that? <laughs> you see that? What happened? That's why cockerels walk backwards. They're going, sorry. <laughs> there are wonderful audience. Is there anyone here from Reading tonight? Anyone from Reading? Uh, I knew you would be, because Reading is very close to where we're doing this at the lakeside, and I read in the Reading paper, it just caught my eye, that police arrested half a dozen prostitutes in Reading last week, and two of them turned out to be virgins, which goes to show you how short money is in Reading. <laughs> I have never been to a prostitute. Once, I went once. Okay, I went once, for an estimate. <laughs> no, no. Why should I go to bed with someone who has utter contempt for me and is only doing it for the money? I've got that at home. I... <laughs> I was sitting over there at one of those tables about two years ago, and it was late at night, the whole crowd had left, all the good customers had gone, and I was sitting there just nursing a last little drink, and a girl came in off the street. I say a girl, she was a mature woman, and I should have known that she had some form of infection by the way she walked in. Now, <laughs> and she rattled a tin that said, keep prostitutes off the streets. I said, how much should I put in? She said, it depends on how long you want to keep me off the streets. <laughs> and it put me in mind, of that earlier this year, I was in Hollywood. Uh, we were in Los Angeles doing the ITV Movie Awards, which is fascinating. Hollywood, or as Hugh Grant calls it, Tonsil Town. <laughs> I went to the Porno Awards. Do you ever watch porno movies? Have you ever seen a porno movie? You see, with a porno movie, what annoys me is the plot's never any good. You know, at the end of a porno movie, when you finish watching it, you never say to yourself, that's a clever twist. Well, maybe you do, but not about the plot. <laughs> I saw a porno movie the other day that really raised my eyebrows, but that's old age for you. 
My wife's approved, she doesn't approve. She said, if ever I caught you watching a hardcore porno film, I'd kill myself. I thought, wait, hold on, Bob, this is too easy. <laughs> because now everybody's making, every little cheap jack, little firm, every little get-rich-quick firm is ripping off Disney. They're, they're remaking the Disney classics. That's wicked. Destroys your illusions. They're making, they're making films called Herpes, the Love Bug. <laughs> Debbie does Dumbo. <laughs> They've even remade Pinocchio as a blue movie. The, uh, the leading actress sits on Pinocchio's face and says, tell a lie, tell the truth, tell a lie, tell the truth. <laughs> I'm still wondering how many of you have actually seen a hard porn movie, a hardcore porn. See, my doctor, I have a nice doctor, but when he was a young medical student, in order to pay his fees, he used to act in porno movies, and this affects his practice even today. When he's giving you an injection, at the last minute, he pulls it out and squirts it over you. <laughs> 45 of you have seen hardcore porno movies. I like my doctor. I went for a me complete medical examination. Because you get my age, you have to be very careful. You know, you want to know how long you can live. So he gave me a complete medical examination. At one point, we got two complete. I was bending over like this. He said, do you mind if I insert one finger? I said, insert two. I'd like a second opinion. <laughs> so he did. I said, is there any way I can help you? He said, don't whistle. OK, OK. <laughs> He checked, he checked my blood count, he checked my pulse rate, he checked everything, and then he said, you wouldn't believe this, he said, I want a sperm count. I said, what are you talking about, man of my age, a sperm count, you're kidding. Because you know, when I'm a young man, when you're a young man, and you, you actually erupt. I said to my wife the other day, isn't it amazing that it, it takes a young man, half a million sperm, to fertilize one egg? I wonder why that is. She said, because they're men, and they won't ask for bloody directions. <laughs> He said, here's a specimen jar, I said. He said, I'd like you to uh, put a sample in that. I said, what now? He said, Poss poss if possible, yes, now. I said, I can't do it now. I said, you know, if I were a young man, every five minutes I could have done it. But I'm an older man now, I, I really can't do that. He said, well, take the jar home and do it as soon as you can and bring it back. He said, you fill it. I said, fill it. <laughs> he said, give me a measurable specimen and come back with it. I said, all right. Now, I'm in misery now, this bloody jar. I'll take it home, I'll go in the bathroom. It's years since I locked myself in the bathroom. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's a humiliating thing for a man of my age to have to do this. Well, I, I thought, well, try it differently than you used to, so I tried it with my left hand. <laughs> I thought it might be a novelty, you know. I damn nearly sprained my wrist after 10 minutes, you know. <laughs> So I've got, a, I've got a dodgy elbow, but I switch to the right hand. <laughs> Still no result, so I, I call on the wife to help. She wrapped a cloth around it and dried both hands. She said, <laughs> <laughs> well, that went on for about half an hour, then... Then her mother had a go, bless her. <laughs> what a woman, what a woman. She tried it with her teeth in, she tried it with her teeth. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we could not get the lid off that bloody jar. <laughs> oh no, oh no, this is entirely wrong. No, 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 Primrose, no, not now, not now, dear, not now, possibly later, but not now, not now, but maybe not ever. Now, you shouldn't have done that, you shouldn't have come on. Did you encourage her to do that? You did, didn't you, you sod? I'm sorry, lady, I don't want to be harsh. She's a sweet girl, she's my very innocent niece, Primrose, and she I used to see me doing Opportunity Knocks, and she thought, if she came along tonight, she might be able to audition for you. And I said, maybe later, it's not a sort of a night in which that could happen. I didn't expect her to come on like that. Now, she did that, didn't it? Do you ever wonder, Laurie, why people take an instant dislike to you? It saves time, Laurie. <laughs> this gang of louts you brought with you, the difference between me and Prince Philip driving a four-horse carriage 
is that he only has to look at four arseholes. 